welcome to the NBS True Views and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. I have seen a dragon sashay down a hallway, and life will never be sweet again. Oh, well, all right then. Uh, I-, I can't say much because um, this episode irks me a lot. <laughs> but anywho... Should I call you Urkel now? Did I do that? No, no, please don't. <laughs> Uh, but anywho, in today's episode, we are going to review Season 8, Episode 24, Father's Father Knows Best. In this episode, while a strange dragon crash lands in Ponyville and claims to be Spike's father, Spike is willing to do anything for his quote-unquote dad to learn to be a quote-unquote real dragon. So, let's get into first impressions, yes. If I sound like I'm rushing, I'm not, because I'm just angry. <laughs> I can feel the anger across the continents. <laughs> so, anyway, Silver, what do you think? Oh, this episode. Poor Spike. Whenever he tries to discover something about his dragon heritage, he basically finds out that there's not a lot there to enjoy. I will say, this thankfully is not a Spike episode where he creates the problem, but rather he's an he's unwilling victim. Or manipulated. Or he's... Yeah, he gets caught up, bamboozled, shaken, not stirred. Oh, yeah, true that, true that. Uh, poor fella, man, poor fella. Uh, as for me, uh, how do I put this? Uh, okay, I won't say the episode's bad. The episode, I, and I won't say it's good. It's in the between. It had a lot of interesting concept to it. It had a lot of potential. And I'm just angry that it's wasted potential. Uh, but still, um, I see just go watch it just to understand what I mean. But before we head into the reviews, um, if you have not watched it, go watch it first and come back and join us. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the episode. If not, listen to my rage. Yes. <laughs> So, anywho, we start off the episode with Spike flying. Yay! That's been a while. We never really seen him fly, right? Well, I mean, he only just recently got those wings. True, true. This was in Season 8, and he just had uh, Dragon Puberty. <laughs> oh, yeah. Which, at, at, the very, at the very least, was over quickly. And now he has wings. Yay. So, anywho, Twilight is teaching Spike how to fly, and... Spike is doing okay, but seems to be struggling a bit. And Twilight doesn't really understand why, because Rainbow Dash teach her how to fly and did some advanced flying, and she did well. Why couldn't she do the same for Spike? And it seems that <laughs> Smolder seems to have the answer, and... Spike is not flying like a dragon. Rather, she's fly- he's flying like a pony. And Smolder teaches Spike how to fly. And Spike says, Thank you, Smolder, for teaching me how to fly. And Twilight says, Oh, I should have caught this because you don't have feathers for wings. Rather, membranes? That's what they call, right? I believe so. I can't really blame Twilight. I mean, it, it's... Especially when you're not familiar with flying on your own, it's hard to challenge assumptions. True, yeah, true. Yeah. And Smolder just says, like, it's every dragon parent teaches their kid how to fly. I mean, how could you miss that? Doi. Smolder, you want to take that knife and probably jab it and twist it? Jab it. Twist it. Bop it. <laughs> Kick it. <laughs> Crush its dreams. Stab it. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. But still, she's a dragon. What does she know, right? All she knows is flying. Oh, true that, true that. So, Twilight feels bad and goes up to Spike's room and apologizes for the debacle that happened today. And she just says that if she knew that how to fly thing and stuff, and she she's failing as a parent. She, she feels that. Like, she's failing as a parent because of her lack of dragon knowledge and she feels bad about it and when she goes up to spike spike is just um, embroidering a throw pillow for smolder as a thank you gift and uh, when spike's in the zone 
he just lost track of time. It's just like Twilight studying in uh, Spike at your service. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. All all you need to do is uh, move something out of place, and she'll snap out of it. <laughs> but anywho, we carry on. Uh, Spike gives the throw pillow to Smolder, and Smolder says, "Dragon don't really use pillows or need pillows," and I call foul on that. Well, I, I know that uh, in Dragon Quest they had a dragon declaring they would steal all of Equestria's pillows, <laughs> so they want them. Yep. In fact, I I I think that Equestria should arrange a catapult twenty one gun pillow salute, just uh, launch them at the dragon lands, and you know whatever hits you, you keep. At the same time, why not trade for them? Like tr- treaties, like trade pillows for I don't know what dragon has. <laughs> what other dragon land has? Gems, lots of gems. Indeed. Certainly looked that way when uh, when they did the Gauntlet of Fire. Probably. Who knows? Eh, who knows? Plus, the dragons may be a natural buffer against external threats from that area. Uh, true that. True that. But who knows, right? Some dragon one pillows. Who knows indeed. Yeah. Some dragon one pillows. So while talking, uh we we see something fiery and bally coming down. You you would say that it's a great ball of fire. Ball <laughs> Oh, you don't know the song. Goodness, greatness, great balls of fire. <laughs> uh man, we're old. <laughs> Speak for yourself, youngin. <laughs> so anywho. Uh, it seems that the Great Ball of Fire is a dragon who crash lands in Ponyville. And said dragon is kind of... What's the word I'm looking for? Um, Lame. Yeah. And it seems that he's injured. Oh, no. And our heroes here sent him to the castle to recuperate. And said dragon is a bit on the... What, what, there's a word for it in Malay, but I don't really remember it in English. Stubborn. Yes, stubborn is a word. And he says that, oh, dragon don't need all these things. Dragon, Dragons can do stuff. And he acts up being injured. Dude, what's wrong with you? Well, we're, we'll find out. There's plenty wrong with him. Yeah, I mean, he, him being injured, I can buy it because he just crash lands. Yes. But not wanting to be helped by the ponies like uh, ego thing probably <sighs> anyway um dragon name is sludge and we have a montage of the ponies uh trying to get him back to health yay so sludge recovers and the ponies kind of well not really ponies but Slash just says to Spike that you're lucky to be living in a place like this because you it looks like you got it made. And Spike just says, well, not really Spike, but I think Twilight says something about uh, Spike not knowing about his dragon heritage or something like that, like just wanting to know more and stuff. And Slash just says, oh, I'm glad to hear that because Spike, I am your father. That's not true. That's impossible. Such a feeling. You know it to be true. No! Well, okay. <laughs> yes? <laughs> well, I mean, uh, Spike seems to accept this rather quickly. <laughs> yep. Oh, God. I do love Pinky's reaction. As everyone gives this collective gasp, Pinky just keeps the gasp going. <laughs> yep. So, yeah. Oh, my goodness. This one here. Oh, my God. Silver, please take over for a bit because I am fuming. Okay, well, it would it be a spoiler to to talk about Sledge's true motives here? Uh, just go ahead, man. Like, we all know, man. We all know. All right, well, this is all going to turn out to be complete pupkiss. So, really, it's like Sludge, maybe he did crash in t- unintentionally, but he saw a good deal. So, the moment he realizes, hey, I can play on this child's uh, history and longing for a connection and get a sweet deal out of it. So he impromptu's a uh, a backstory, and it's funny. Spike's mother, as depicted in this flashback, is one of the concept designs uh, Lauren Faust had early on. You can you can find it on the MLP wiki. 
but it's basically a concept art for a female dragon. And they use that. So that's a fun little nugget. Which is cool, but at the same time, too, it's kind of sad that we don't really get to see the proper model in animation. Uh, we, we What we get here is just a flashback or something like that. Indeed. But through a stylized flashback, we get to see Torch once again oh, yeah. and Spike's mother as she she's tasked with seeking out new migration patterns or r- routes. Mm-hmm. But there's a proportions issue. See, she's comparable in size to Torch, but when we next see her, she's just a little taller than Sludge. Now, Sludge may be overestimating his own size, uh, which someone's compensating. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But the argument is that his bride entrusted him with a spike as an egg, and he went flying first to Mount Eris. Oh, wait, Pinky already says they already covered that. Yep. So he goes even f- even further. And I got to say, I don't know if this place is real. This These floating islands with chains linking them and uh, prison windows. But I want it to be. That place looks awesome. You could have any number of adventures there. Yeah, that looks awesome. Usually involving prison breaks. Oh, yeah. That, that, that's just awesome. But at the same time, too, uh, I, you mentioned something about Pinky saying we've been to Mount Eris. And uh, Pinky just says we've been to clunk town something like that yep a lot of movie continuity going on yeah, here town. and sludge here is just surprised like wait what the soft ponies have been in down south to clunk town and wait what they they, they saved the hippogriff what what <laughs> like <laughs> curse your movie you're making it harder for me to deceive them <laughs> yeah and, and here's where he has to make up a place called the skill hunter skill bound something like that mm, not entirely sure but either way, he claims he's been in prison there for all this time. No no mention of how it, he, the egg made it to Celestia. Yeah, because Rainbow Dash questions that. <laughs> yeah, the ponies are not buying this, but Spike is just completely smitten. Mm-hmm. I have a father figure. <laughs> Daddy. Uh, can't blame the poor kid. He, like, j- <laughs> Could you just imagine someone comes up <laughs> okay you know what that just sounds so wrong in our in our universe someone goes up to you hey silver i'm your dad <laughs> i already got one <laughs> yeah i know <clears throat> oh, but anywho so yeah so now spike has an agenda a list of, of things he's always wanted to do with daddy dearest and so this, well, how to describe this? There are all these events that Spike and Sludge partake in, and Sludge seems to be enjoying himself for the most part. Gifts, playing a uh, buckball, and I gotta give props to Fluttershy. I mean, she is hanging in there with a fire breathing dragon way better than her season one self. True. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of something. And he is an adult, yes. Have Fluttershy and Ember met before? Not yet. I have hopes. Hmm. So, yeah, that, that's interesting. Yeah, that's interesting. So, what you say is true. Fluttershy is handling Sludge pretty well. And they do, they arrange a hearth swarming while sunbathing ponies watch on. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but here's the thing. Sludge, this is what I kind of hoped would happen. That Sludge might actually start to become fond of Spike. That he's a an actor who fell in love with the role. Who could admit, no, I'm not really your father, but I'd like to be there for you if you have dragon questions. We know, we know from shots that made, like Sludge just sort of peeking at Spike. like <laughs> Kind of like the uh, raptor monster from the latest Jurassic World. Ha <laughs> I'm going to get him. <laughs> I'm going to get him, audience. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, play that. Oh, <laughs> oh boy. But, but no. No, throughout it all, Sludge just basically is playing Spike. And in doing so, he starts to say, you know what? You can't be a real dragon with all this cutesy stuff around you. You need to get rid of it. Live harsh. Here, I'll take all your comfy pillows and beds and sleeping uh, eyepieces don't brush your teeth. 
Oh, here, let's throw Starlight out with the tub. <laughs> uh, I, I just want to see the repercussion of this event. Like, oh, Spike, you are so dead. <laughs> well, I, I mentioned it's Sludge who, throw Starlight, who threw Starlight out, but she's like, is Starlight going to have to kill a dragon? <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. Like, you could, I, I could just imagine, like, Twilight holding her back. Oh, no, no, no. That's Spike, that's Spike's dad. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. And like after this, oh, he's not his dad. <laughs> I need me to be dragon hunting. Yeah, Starlight goes on an epic quest to kill <laughs> Sludge. Uh, kill is bad, Silver. We don't use that word. We just say meme. R- She'll banish him to the ether. No, the shadow realm. <laughs> I like the ether more right now. <sighs> but I guess it's an ether or situation. Uh, by the way, song plays here while... Uh, they're kind of or such is saying what needs to happen with Spike. Oh, and you know how last review we were we were just so enchanted by the Kieran song and talking about well, okay, take that and remove any sense of fondness for the character. Yeah. Because Sludge is a good the guy singing for Sludge is a good good oh, singer. Yeah. I mean he's he's playing the part marvelously. But we're not meant to like Sludge. True that, true that. And here's the thing. Um, the song is good. I, I I won't deny that. The song that Daniel Ingram wrote here was good. The actor playing Sludge of... Man, I forgot his name. Uh, not really, I forgot. I didn't really look it up. Uh, who was his name? Ding, 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 ding. Dave Petiti? Oh, huh, Okay. So Dave here, he plays Sludge really well. And here's an actor quote I wholeheartedly agree on. If you play a role, or if you play a bad guy, and if the audience hates you and wants to kill you in real life, you're doing something right. Or you could be like that one actor for the Joker in Suicide Squad, in which case your co-workers want to kill you. Totally different thing, man. Is it? I don't know. But anyway, let's carry on. Oh, we're carrying on. So Sludge, he starts making himself really at home. It's so funny that donning clothes actually seems to become more scandalous in Equestria. I mean, there's that great shot of Twilight while Sludge is reclining. Now, Twilight, draw me like one of your French mares. Oh, no. I don't don't have any French mares. Oh, you'll do fine. (laughs) Oh, no. Oh no! Oh, oh, did, oh the, the, this one scene where Twilight, uh, we we get a shot of Twilight frame in between Sludge's legs. Like, oh man, what does this remind me of? The Graduate. Probably. You're trying to seduce me. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Hello, darkness, my old friend. I'm singing of this song again. The last Korean song was much better. <laughs> but anyhow. <laughs> Well, here's the thing. We get a scene where Twilight and friends are coming to the map room. And Twilight is saying we can use the map to blank. I wondered if she was trying to validate or corroborate Sludge's story about this floating uh, peak with all the prisons. But we'll never find out because Sludge decided to nap on the Tree of Harmony's friendship map. Ah, true. that, And also we forgot to mention uh, why was twilight in spike's room to begin with it seems that she wants to talk to spike about sludge's attitude and stuff and it seems that spike has been sleeping outdoors camping it out roughing it out with the natures the natures the magics and it just keeps going until twilight finally confronts spike and this is where oh oh this is heartbreak where Spike basically breaks Twilight's yeah, heart. Literally, too. Uh, you're tearing me apart, Spike! And let's see, what did, what did what were Spike's exact words? That's what I need to know. Twilight said something like, different than who you are, and maybe you just don't like, uh, just don't like me. I, I have a real parent now. Something like that. Here's what he says. Taking, Twilight's mentioning he takes over your room, is mess, making a mess of things. Spike says that is dragon culture. You never acted like that. And Spike, oh, he hits really below the belt. That's because you raised me. Now I finally have a chance to see how I'm supposed to be. And, oh, you... 
I don't really need the visual imagery of Twilight's heart shattering. But, she does it on her own. The imagery does uh, sell it. <laughs> did sell it. Oh man! Still, oh man. Okay, here, here, here. This is what the. This is one of those reasons why I do not like this episode. Or I, I, it's not in my top five. Like this is the reason why. Because Spike hurts Twilight's feelings. Yes, that, and more. But this, this one here is one of those things like. The icing on the cake, as they say. Because Spike is degenerate. Oh, he's under bad influence. I mean, Spike's losing himself in all of this. Yeah, man. Yeah. I'm going to say whatever I want to say at the end when we do discussions. <sighs> but anyhow. Well, I will say thank goodness for Smoke. Yes. Because, because when she happens upon Spike roughing it, she at least recognizes that there's something wrong. And she starts asking a lot of questions. And it's, I'm so glad Spike has dragons besides Garble that he can consult. True that, true that. Ember, like, Ember's one of those dragons that you really can count on. But, and you can count on Smolder too, because now Smolder basically lays a trap for Sludge. They, they take away everything, and he, and Spike is gonna drag Sludge out into the wild where they can really rough it. Like, True dragons. And of course, Sludge being incredibly weak willed, he basically loses the uh, gap right away. He he abandons the act because he just wants to say, Look, I'm not really your father. I saw an opportunity and I took yeah. it. And Smolder just says something uh something like we dragons don't do that. Like it's only you. You're the lazy bum. <laughs> well, it's interesting because I think I've mentioned this before, but one of the things I dislike in sci-fi fantasy is the monoculture. You establish a race and suddenly everyone in that group believes the same blessed thing. Uh, there's no divergence. There's no conflicting personalities. I mean, look at our culture. You can, you can gather people under one big banner, but once you look beneath that banner, there's about 50,000 subgroups. Uh, that, that's true. And I, I think it's called the stereotype. Most Americans would stereotype a person. Um, you you guys label everything from the Mexican being brown, the Asian being yellow, or the Chinese being yellow, and the African American would be black, and so on. Is that unique to America? I, I recall I've seen English and French uh, films that do something similar. Probably, but from from my knowledge, from where I see it most of the time, it's Americans and. The thing about the stereotypes, and I would say this too for Malaysians because the Chinese know math. And that's no kidding because most of the smart children in Malaysia who knows a lot of math, the high percentage are going to be Chinese. So I guess that's truth behind it probably. All you're making me think of right now is that uh, college humor, Zordon is a racist. <laughs> Wait, you made me the Black Ranger because I'm I have African dis or origins. I'm from Connecticut. <laughs> oh my god! Wait, am am I the Green Ranger because I'm Jewish and you think I'm good with money? No, 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 no. <laughs> oh my god! Did you know that they almost made the they almost casted the Red Ranger Native American? <laughs> yeah, that would have been awkward. Not at all, actually. They did go there later. Really? But speaking of, Ooh, Oh, yeah. Which one? Yeah. Tommy. He, uh, Power Rangers Zeo. Sorry. They made a big... He, he, they made a... They made a big deal of his American tribal heritage. Was he? I don't know about the actor himself, but the character. Um, I don't know then. Yeah, so it's kind of a yeah. mess. But with dragon heritage, though... Dragons have this reputation of they they take what they want. Now to sludge, that means you you take advantage of a situation when it uh, presents itself. To smolder, there are limits. You don't want to be a weakling dragon, and that's what sludge is right now. He's he's being so passive. I guess it's a difference between if you take a treasure versus you scam someone out of a treasure. Mm. One has greater nobility or honor than the other. True, true. But this is where um, the dragon culture 
it's uncertain. We got no real idea how it works. Well, we're we're learning, but not. We're learning some of the darker sides of dragon culture through mm-hmm. sludge, and a hint of a greater nobility through small. Oh, well, you could just say that sludge is just a bum who leeches off people or dragons or ponies. Well, that too can be part. That too can be part of the culture. I doubt it. Because the way Smolder mentions her history, remember in the episode where Spike got his wing, um, once the kid matures, they kick him out and he has to fend for himself, which makes no sense really when Smolder says, oh, um, parents teach the kids how to fly. That or she's just playing a joke on Spike. <laughs> Well, who knows? Maybe they let the kid back in after uh, the stench goes away. <laughs> yeah. Or they work out a visitation. <laughs> Either way, Spike is now, well, freed from the manipulation. Although I'd also like that uh, Smolder, who's not always the most empathetic, is supportive. You know, she recognizes that he's... This would hurt. Especially as... Uh, Sludge reaches back in through the window and says, I'm taking this pillow. <laughs> Meanwhile, Starlight Glimmer is outside with like 50 swords, <laughs> all suspended. The reason we'll never see Sludge again is because she made sure you'd never find the body. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Like, she promised Twilight she'll never use that time-traveling spell, but <laughs> uh, what she don't know won't hurt her. And will hurt Sludge. <laughs> and so, thankfully, Spike goes to Twilight and reconciles. Affirming his devotion to pillows. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> and also Twilight. And uh, Spike just says that I, I, I don't really... I don't need to know who my dragon parents are because I have you, Twilight. You're, you're like a mother to me. And hugs. I know who my real family is. And Twilight's like, ah, oh, it, it's me, right? <laughs> it's like, yes, Twilight, you're supposed to be the smart one. <laughs> who knows? It could be Twilight Velvet. Yeah, that's right. She she's my mom. You're my sister. <laughs> we never got to see the, their relationship. Yep. Yeah. Also, pillows. I could never live without yep. pillows. At which point, the extended cut, he breaks into song. I want a Dr. <laughs> Nakara for Christmas. No. Only a Dr. Rarity will do. No, stop. <laughs> maybe I will. Maybe I won't. Oh. And, and with that, we leave Sludge behind. He is in the gutter of the show's storyline, and I have no desire to see him again. Uh, so he and like you say, he did do a very effective job of being true the villain. True that. True that. I do not challenge that. So uh, episode ends, and here's I, I want to do a bit of a discussion because to me, to me personally, why I find this episode bad is that wasted potential. They wasted the storyline of Spike wanting to discover his family origins. And this here could have been done in so many ways. This is one of them. I I don't blame the writers for taking this path because it's much more easy to clean up and leave no loose ends. But it just irks me a lot because... The idea of discovering parents in a show has always been a great storyline. I mean, uh, one show that pops into my head right now that does that is Hunter x Hunter, where the main character, Gon, is trying to look for his father, who is a deadbeat dad, but that's beside the point. There's another anime set in South America. Mm, I don't remember. Darn if I can't remember all of a sudden. Two women. Ah. Well, I, no time to dwell on that. Uh, so, Silver, what, what do you think, man? Like, not this is not final thoughts, but just discussion. Like, what, what do you think? Uh, wasted potential? I won't say that because I have some friends who were orphans, and and they actually resonated with Spike that they didn't need to know their family to know who they are. It's someone who's. Well, just uh, someone who's secure in their identity and doesn't have to have that in order to appreciate who they are. And so I feel like it's not mandatory. It's nice, but it's not, oh, it's not 
the quick fix to identity that I think Spike might have wanted at the beginning. Actually, the funny thing is he didn't. It was Twilight who was just very self-conscious about uh, about teaching Spike to be a dragon. And so, in some ways, maybe it would have been interesting if Twilight had tried to work with Sludge to raise Spike or to teach him more. Sure, but here's the thing, because they know Ember. Ember is just a letter, <laughs> just a stone throw away. So, the, to me, like, you don't really need Sludge. All you can do is just go up to Ember and ask or stuff. I mean, <laughs> to me, maybe I just want to see more Ember or I I want to know more about the dragons and whatnot. But, oh man, I would say that it's wasted potential on this storyline. Many things could have been done or stuff. I, I don't know, man. Also, I found the anime that I was struggling with. Michiko and Hachin. Michiko and Hachin. All right. A, ser- a search through South America for, I believe it's Michiko's uh, deadbeat dad. Uh, oh. Oh, wait, no, it's Hachin who's on the ser- Hachin who was on the search for her uh, estranged father, who is a oh. deadbeat. This looks like a very cool anime. It is. This is recent, right? Uh, three or four years old, I think. Ah, okay. That's cool. Huh, all right. But anywho, basically, I would have liked to see Twilight maybe trying to work with Sludge and then having doubts about who he really is. And Spike could be caught in the middle. It might sound like a rehash of No Second Prances, though hopefully done in a, a, a style that makes Twilight look better. But as it is, you see that Spike's being played, and that's hard. Because he... He's 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 so naive and innocent in this. And that just makes Sludge look all the more monstrous. Yeah, true that. And I guess that's why I didn't like this episode. Probably it's more to do with the potential. But eh, now, now that I'm thinking about it right, I don't like Sludge because just all the bad things that he did to Spike. So now I have to re- re- reevaluate that. Do I hate this episode because of what? Sludge is doing so does that mean it's a good episode or <laughs> there's being effective and then there's being enjoyable I think this was very effective in making Sludge be the villain but did you enjoy seeing him be the villain mm. that, that's that's the question like I dislike Sludge a lot but I like the episode as a whole so mm. But at the same time, too, potential of Spike wanting to meet his parents. <laughs> so that is, oh man, like, oh man. Like, I think I'm just caught up on the potential because we could have Twilight send a letter to Celestia asking where the egg came from and so on. Or just send a letter to um, Ember asking if she could identify Spike's egg or something like that. I mean, it's a lot. Well, may I, may I distract you with a headcanon then oh sure please remember smolder's story at heartswarming about the dragon lord that got her uh got the scepter stolen by scales mm-hmm, yeah, yes well what if celestia discovered that deposed dragon lord out in the wildlands and befriended her and over time maybe helped her get away from that terrible situation hmm. that that would be an answer if that dragon then had an egg, maybe with another. I'm not sure how. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna ask for how dragons mate, because, yeah. you know, this is a family friendly podcast sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> but who better to entrust an egg to Celestia say, and just say, "Look, I don't want my my hatchling to grow up in the same culture. I want I want him or her to change." So I'm trusting him to you with the hope he'll come back and change dragon culture. Oh. Now, now that would be interesting. That would be a story worth pursuing. I don't we're in the final season. I don't know if that's going to happen. Oh. But it's an interesting idea. Yeah, true. That true that. I mean, uh I think what the first half of season 9 is in the can now, so just probably waiting to be shown. So yeah, but still, man. Ah, you know what? 
I'm 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 at ease. I'm at peace right now. Your hit cannon has eased my anger. Yay. Oh, I have eased your troubled mind. Yes, yes. So anywho, let's hit on to final thoughts. Well, for me this episode is indeed a uh it's a study in effectiveness versus entertainment. You could be highly effective in what you're trying to do, but it depends on if you get entertainment. I'm usually not entertained by a character I love to hate. I mean, I love seeing them suffer a consequence, but lo and behold, Sludge doesn't really suffer a consequence. He just bails out and gets a pillow out of the deal. <laughs> yeah, uh, true that. I wouldn't have mind see- seeing the bill come due to him. Or, like I say, it would have been nice to see Sludge maybe lo- start to enjoy the role and come clean, but not give up on Spike. True that, true that. Both are excellent ideas because, well, if we get to see Sludge get his comeuppance via Starlight, that will be much, <laughs> that will be much fun. Or we get to see Sludge saying or coming up with the truth and redeeming himself. Which is, would you say that? Yeah, he might redeem himself. He might at least make an honest turn. At which point, Spike has had an impact on him, just as he will have an impact on Spike. Yeah. That, but at the same time, too, we don't want to call back the actor to pay him more, so no. <laughs> uh, oh, come on. He, he did a fine job, and I don't... My critique of the character or his role has nothing to do with the voice actor's talent. Oh, no. That, that is always true. But the problem with Hasbro or... Yeah, Hasbro most of the time is, yeah, we're just going to use you once and be done with it. <laughs> Which is sad. Well, it's... Well, I'm not really sure who's who's setting the budget on this. We've had returning characters, mm-hmm, true that, true but that. I don't I don't know who says, yeah, let's get more of this character. No more of this character. This character, not so much. Yeah, true, true. Ah, well. And as for me, this episode was a lot of fun to watch and hate. I do like moments with Spike because he's just so innocent and wondrous. But at the same time, too, when you come into Sludge, he's just taking advantage of poor Spike. And he, here's where I argue or just propose that question where if a person or a character is playing his character to the T and makes you hate him because, well, he's a villain and you're supposed to hate villains, is that a good job? Or is that like, eh, I don't know. So to me, I'm in that in-between where do I like it because of how Sludge is, or do I hate it because of how Sludge is? So I'm probably in between in this one. Like, I dislike it, but I have to respect it. Yes, that's a word. Oh, there you go. Respect. Yep. So, yeah. And, yeah, those are my thoughts. Those are my thoughts. But, anywho, Silver, what are we going to do next week? Well, it's time to finish up Season 8. Because, if we want to talk about effective villains, we're going to have a debate about Cozy Glow. <laughs> Yes, her. Mm. And her scheme to take over Equestria as the Empress of Friendship. Ah ha 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 ha. Ah ha ha. Ah ha 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 Yes, so next week. Next week we are going to review School Race Part 1 and 2. And with that we will finish of season 8 and probably go to discussion about season 8 slash cozy glow maybe who knows we shall see yep shall see we shall see that's next week's plans or the weeks after whatever we're gonna do this so yeah so weeks upon weeks upon weeks yeah like if only the audience know what we do <laughs> so anyway if you have any questions concerns or suggestions for the show you can contact us at the mbshowgmail.com and you can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at NBA Show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Silver, where can the good people find you? Well, the good people can find me on the Twitters under MLP Silver Quill, on DeviantArt under MLP hyphen Silver hyphen Quill. You can also find me on YouTube, just do a search for After the Fact or Silver Quill. And every Wednesday, I post on Equestria Daily with a comic review or editorial. Awesome, awesome. And those are really fun to read up. And it's one of those scenarios where scroll through QD and it says, oh, new comics out. Silver reviewed it. And ah, I must go to 
Comicsology or wherever I buy my comics to go buy the comics. Yay! Although if I'm if I've read Comicsology and everything else right, we're not getting new comics this month of April. Ooh, any reason why? It may have to do with April only being yeah eight, thirty days. It's a slightly shorter month. That doesn't really make sense because previously we did had comics in April. Well, I don't write the schedules. I just report on when they say they'll be out. Hmm, uh, I guess. Probably the artist needs to break, too. Uh, I don't mind. I do not know, but we will have to be a little bit patient. Fortunately, we have plenty of episodes to talk about. Episodes, comics, season nine. Oh my god, we have so much to do, Silver! <laughs> ah! Calm yourself, Norman. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Oh. Your, your heart is going... True that, true. <laughs> true that, true that. And uh, you know what? Uh, what could calm me down is if you guys subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date with what we're doing and Stitch Radio and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on polyvalive.com. Links are in the show notes. If you would like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash the MBS show. With every support, you'll get a week's early access to the Review and Discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content, and a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, I'd like to thank Amy, Lucky Knight, Tristan, Starstream, Jeffrey, and also Master of Leg. Thank you so much, guys. You're awesome. And a fun fact for you Patreons and for you guys at home, when I say you get a week's early access to the Review and Discussion podcast, literally... As this episode finished recording, well, not really this one, but the previous one, I edited and uploaded ASAP. <laughs> so that put a lot of pressure on me. <laughs> ah. So anywho, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Cecil Requiem. And we will guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the Yes Show. See ya. Adios. Oh man, um, I I do not want to see what Starlight did to that dragon. Ugh. Well, it makes your heart go <laughs> again. Yep. Oh man. Well, probably Kaching. <laughs> He's gonna die. Yep. Yeah.